Chapter 52 Piper Piper didn't remember much about the rest of the night. They told their story and answered a million questions from the other campers, but finally Chiron saw how tired they were and ordered them the bed. It felt so good to sleep on a real mattress, and Piper was so exhausted, she crashed immediately, which spared her any worry about what it would be like returning to the Aphrodite cabin. The next morning, she woke in her bunk, feeling reinvigorated. The sun came through the windows along with a pleasant breeze. It must have been spring instead of winter. Birds sang. Monsters howled in the woods. Breakfast smells wafted in through the dining pavilion. Bacon, pancakes, and all sorts of wonderful things. Drew and her gang were frowning down at her, their arms crossed. Morning, Piper sat up and smiled. Beautiful day. You're going to make us late for breakfast, Drew said, which means you get to clean the cabin for inspection. A week ago, Piper would have either punched Drew in the face or hit him back under her covers. Now she thought about the Cyclops in Detroit, Medea in Chicago, Midas turning her to gold in Omaha. Looking at Drew, who used to bother her, Piper laughed. Drew's smug expression crumbled. She backed up, and then remembered she was supposed to be angry. What are you... Challenging you, Piper said. How about noon in the arena? You can choose the weapons. She got out of bed, stretched, stretched leisurely, and beamed at her cabin mates. She spotted Mitchell and Lacey, who'd helped her pack, her pack for the quest. They were smiling tentatively, their eyes flitting from Piper to Drew like this might be a very interesting tennis game. I missed you guys, Piper announced. We're going to have a great time when I'm senior counselor. Drew turned bug juice red. Even her closest lieutenants looked a little nervous. This wasn't in the script. You, Drew spluttered. You ugly little witch. I've been here the longest. You can't just... Challenge you, Piper said. Sure I can. Camp rules. I've been cleaned by Aphrodite. I've completed a quest, which is one more than you've completed. If you feel I can do a better job... Then I challenge you, unless you want to just step down. Did I get that right, Mitchell? <laughs> just right, Piper. Mitchell was grinning. Lacey was bouncing up and down like she was trying to achieve liftoff. A few of the other kids started to grin, as if they were enjoying the different colors that Drew's face was turning. Step down, Drew shrieked. You're crazy! Piper shrugged. Then, fast as a viper, she pulled Catropus from under a pillow, unsheathed the dagger, and thrust the point under Drew's chin. Everybody else backed up fast. One guy crashed into a makeshift table and sent a plume of pink powder into the air. Duel, then, Piper said cheerfully. If you don't want to wait till noon, now is fine. You've turned this cabin into a dictatorship, Drew. Selena Beauregard knew better than that. Aphrodite's about love and beauty. Being loved. Spreading beauty. Good friends, good times, good deeds. Not just looking good. Selena made some mistakes, but in the end, she stood by her friends. That's why she was a hero. I'm going to set things right, and I've got a feeling Mom will be on my side. Want to find out? Drew went cross-eyed looking at the blade of Piper's dagger. A second passed, then two. Piper didn't care. She was absolutely happy and confident. It must have shown in her smile. I... I stepped down... Drew said. But if you think I'm ever going to forget this, McLean... Oh, I hope you won't, Piper said. Now run along to the dining pavilion and explain to Chiron while we're late. There's been a change of leadership. Drew backed towards the door. Even her closest lieutenants didn't follow her. She was about to leave when Piper said, Oh, and Drew, honey? The former counselor looked back reluctantly. In case you think I'm not a true daughter of Aphrodite, Piper said. Don't even look at Jason Grace. He may not know it yet, but he's mine. If you even try to make a move, I will load you into a catapult and shoot you across Long Island Sound. Drew turned around so fast, she ran into the doorframe. Then, she was gone. The cabin was silent. The other campers stared at Piper. This was the part she was unsure of. She didn't want to rule by fear. She wasn't like Drew, but she didn't know if they'd accept her. Then, spontaneously, the Aphrodite campers cheered so loudly, they must have been heard all across the camp. They herded Piper out of the cabin, raised her on their shoulders, and carried her all the way to the dining pavilion. Still in her pajamas, her hair still a mess, but she didn't care. She'd never felt better.